Hi guys, welcome. Today we are going to be making a standing up heart-shaped cake. So for this project we're going to be needing a 12 inch wood board. I covered it with some fondant and I put a pretty ribbon on the side. Um, we need a serrated knife, we need a spatula, frosting spreader, we need a piece of styrofoam about two inches wide. Um, I, this used to be a square piece, I cut it diagonally, so this is gonna be the base of our heart-shaped cake. I need a bolt and a knot, four and a half inches to five inches is okay. A piece of cardboard with a hole in the middle so that we can get the bolt through it. We're gonna need some glue, two five inch cakes, some buttercream, and a drill. We're gonna start by drilling the hole. Don't wanna drill into your table, so be careful. So this, it's nice when you're fondant, it's really dry so you don't ruin it. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that I have these little pegs on the bottom of my board so that when I put my bolt, oops, thank you. When I put my bolt in there, there's room for it. Um, there's room for it. So the reason why I'm doing this is this is going to help make sure that the cakes stay standing up and if you're transporting it's not it's going to be safe it's not going to fall down it's a pretty gravity defying cake so it's good to make sure you have a good solid structure so that it stays gravity defying and it doesn't fall All right, see because of those pegs, now the bolt is not touching the ground. So I am going to actually, I'm going to put the bolt in and that way there's no chance this thing is going anywhere. But I'm gonna make the hole on the, in the fondant a little bit bigger with a little exacto knife. That way it can sink into it and not be resting on top of the fondant. You can get a wrench and tighten it, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm not going to do that. It's very sturdy. Great. Now we make sure. Okay, so we are going to have a little bit of this screw exposed, so we need to cover that because we do not want that touching our cake. All right, now to the cakes. I have the two five inch rounds. Um, these are about two and a half inches thick right now, but I'm going to cut them in half, put a little bit of frosting in the middle, and I'm also gonna take the top off so that it's nice and even. We don't want to make uh, the buttercream layer too thick. I like to work with Swiss meringue buttercream. It makes it very stable when it cools down. There we go. We're gonna crumb coat it, just a thin layer of buttercream all over. I'm gonna measure this. And it is roughly two inches, just slightly bit smaller. I'm going to put now this cake in the fridge. I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other cake. And once it's all cold, then we're gonna to start to assemble. 
Okay, now my two five inch round cakes are in the fridge and I'm going to start getting ready for the base. So I'm going to get the hot glue gun, which is now really nice and hot. I cut the little piece of cardboard exactly to fit on top of it, which is, like I said, two inches, two inches wide. So it's gonna be pretty much the same size as the same size as my cakes. So I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue. If you have time and you want to use uh, regular glue, that's probably better because it doesn't melt the, the styrofoam. But if you are in, trying to do it fast like I am, then the hot glue will work. It's sizzling. All right. And we don't want any of this styrofoam crumbs appearing in our cake, so we're also going to crumb coat this. So I'm going to also put a thin layer of buttercream. I have to be careful. I don't want to get any pieces of styrofoam back in the buttercream, so I wouldn't put it back in the bowl. All right, now we're gonna just put this in the fridge as well so that it, the buttercream is nice and firm when we are ready to use it. Okay. Okay, so I just took the cakes out of the fridge and we are gonna start carving. I also refrigerated that little part and I let them stay overnight so that they would be nice and firm. So I'm gonna grab a serrated knife and I'm gonna now shape my heart. I'm gonna take a piece off. Hold on. I'm gonna put it there so you can see. And kind of just calculate. I'll take a piece off of each one, about an inch and a half. So there, can you see? I took a piece off at the bottom, a piece in the middle, and now play with it, put some buttercream on it, get it to look like a sculpted heart. Here's my board, which we had ready, and I'm gonna measure. So my screw is higher than this piece, so I'm going to grab a little piece of silicone tape and uh, cover that piece up so we don't have the metal touching the cake. And just like that. You can find this at Home Depot. It comes in really handy for sculpted cakes. And that's it. So I already had my hole in this piece of styrofoam and on the board. There we go. And now what I wanna do is um, I grab two little dowels. I sharpen the tips because I wanna put them in the middle just so that when the cake is being transported, we don't have any casualties of the cake falling so I have to be careful not to hammer it too low so that it doesn't come out from the bottom now one side and it doesn't have to be perfect right now because we are still going to be carving it a little bit and covering it with more buttercream. There we go. And now we're gonna start to cover the whole thing in buttercream. 
we want to make sure that the transition between the board, the styrofoam, and the cake, it's smooth. So we don't, when we put, when we cover it with fondant, we don't want to have that line. So we want to make sure it's covered really well with buttercream. So I did not have to carve the cake much, so ju I just carved the little piece in the middle and I think that looks really nice, I'm happy with it. So um, the thing about a cake like this is that you have to work in, in sort of in sections of time because you now I'm going to need to refrigerate it, it's already um, too soft for me to keep working. So I'm going to put it in the fridge again for maybe about half an hour and once the buttercream is hard enough that I can keep working with it. I'm gonna to touch it up just a teeny bit more so that I don't have any loose little pieces of buttercream creating points and uh, then I will cover it in fondant. So. Okay, so while the cake is waiting in the fridge, I am going to pull out, I think about a pound and a half, a pound and, I, I think I um, have about a pound and 10 ounces here. I actually weighed it. And um, somewhere around there between a pound and a half and two pounds of whatever color of fondant you would like. Just make sure you soften it a bit. comes the fun part. This is the challenging part, is trying to get this the bottom part to not have any wrinkles and be smooth. So you want to kind of pull out a little bit and then smooth it in. Pull out, smooth in, pull out, smooth in. It's a little different from, or a lot different from a regular cake. If you end up with some imperfections, don't worry. You could also add a flower or something like that. Um, I would like, ideally, to get this one smooth because I wanted to paint some things on it. So we'll see what it wants to do.
to use this tool that to sort of clean up my bottom part a little bit, tuck it in, make sure it looks So I have decided this is my front, this is my back because it's slightly imperfect over there but it doesn't matter because I have a heart shaped cake and this thing is not going anywhere, you see? Okay, so this is it. You have a heart shaped cake uh, defying gravity and now it is either ready to give to somebody as is or you can decorate it. If you watch the next video, I will show you um, the way I am going to decorate this cake, I'm going to add some gold and I'm going to paint um, and probably add a banner saying Happy Valentine's Day. So if you like this video, um, watch the next one. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel so you can watch more videos like this and make some more fun cakes. Thanks.